Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be explaining how to use Rosetta Fold 2, a uh, protein structure prediction model by the Baker Lab, and we're going to be using it on the Neurosat platform. So if you don't already know, the Neurosat platform basically makes it easier to use these different tools because everything's handled on the website and you don't have to actually install and interact with these tools or any command lines or anything like that. So it's a much simpler and more practical way to access these models. So before we get started, I just want to go over to the Rosetta Fold 2 preprint, and we can see when comparing the structure uh, prediction accuracy for monomers, Rosetta Fold 2 and AlphaFold are actually quite close. If anything, Rosetta Fold 2 might be a little bit better for monomers, and multimers just a little bit worse. Whereas for complexes, uh, we see that Rosetta Fold 2 is about the same level, if not slightly worse than multimer. So this is pretty good, and means that Rosetta Fold 2 can be used to um, you know, predict certain um, complexes, as well as predict certain chains with a pretty high degree of accuracy. And on top of that, Rosetta Fold 2 has uh, a lower resource uh, requirement and spends a, tends to require less compute time to run. So in some cases, it could actually be faster than AlphaFold 2. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're actually going to use this 2-hydroxymuconate uh, tautomerase enzyme from Pseudomonas. This is just an example enzyme, and I've already gone ahead and put it in the sequence field over here. The next settings are the symmetry settings. So in our case, because it's just an example video, we can keep it at unspecified slash unknown, which means it's just going to predict the single chain. Um, if you don't know too much about protein symmetries, we have a great blog post that covers all this um, on the Neurosnap blog. So these are, these are just like a brief list of uh, different protein symmetries, different common protein symmetries. And we also have some different examples using Rosetta Fold 2 on this blog post, so it's really worth checking out. Um, and next up, what we're going to do is we're going to cover the MSA settings. So the defaults tend to be really good. Diagonal and default uh, for MSA concatenation mode have shown the best results, with diag being slightly better, uh, at least to my understanding. For the MSA method, you have the option to change between single sequence or generating the MSA using this sequence and the MM62 um, MSA generation pipeline. Generally, the MM6 MSA generation pipeline tends to perform the best, so we, we keep this as the default. And pair mode as well, this is probably going to be the best option. However, if you want to change things up, um, then you have the option to as well. Last, um, next up we have the number of recycles. So this is probably the most important parameter when it comes to improving poor results. So essentially what's, it's kind of similar to the AlphaFold 2 number of recycles where the model basically takes in its uh, original prediction and tries to build off of that and improve it over time. So if you increase recycles, you're also going to be increasing compute time, but you tend to, you tend to get better results. And for smaller medium-sized proteins, five is generally enough. However, if you have a protein that you, um, you know, the accuracy just quite isn't what you're looking for, or it's a bigger protein, then increasing this to 15 might be a, a really great way to improve the accuracy of your structure. Lastly, we have some options for uh, stochasticity or randomness to kind of change up structure and sample possibly different conformations, or to try and like improve um, predictions where you have a protein that is just a little bit weird and the model's not the best at predicting its structure. These settings are MLM and use dropout. And after we also have the max MSA option, uh, 128 is generally better if you increase this. The memory requirements for this model will also increase, which could result in a filled job. And you also have the random seed. So uh, what you want to do is you want to change this if you're trying to re-predict the structure of the same protein. So yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to submit this. And I will return as soon as the results are back. All right, so we are back with the results. As we can see, this was a pretty small protein because it was so small. It only took 23 seconds to execute, which is quite fast. And, uh, you know, when it comes to accuracy, we see the structure itself looks pretty good. And the metrics that go along with the structure also look pretty solid. So if you don't already know, a lot of these metrics are actually also available uh, whenever you submit an AlphaFold2 job or an AlphaFold2 prediction. Mean PLDDT is the average PLDDT, and PLDDT itself is a per residue metric that dictates the model's confidence in a particular residue's uh, spatial orientation and position. So as we can see, overall the model uh, is predicting all the residues to be in um, you know, kind of the right spot and like with uh, pretty high accuracy, with the exception of maybe this termini over here. But this is pretty standard. You usually see kind of like a fall off around the, the various termini of a model. And next up, we also have the PAE. So the PAE is the predicted aligned structure between the true structure and the predicted structure. 
And overall, given this protein's, uh, this protein's shape and structure, this PAE makes a lot of sense. And another important thing to note is that PAE itself is actually used to, um, to produce this PTM metric. And the PTM metric is the predicted TM score. So this is a metric that ranges between 0 and 1. And the higher it is, the better it is. So 0 0.85 is pretty solid. Anything above 0 0.75 is usually pretty solid. Um, oh, and PLDT ranges between 0 and 100. And the higher, the better, generally speaking. So another thing I want to do is I quickly want to compare this structure predicted with Rosetta Fold 2 to uh, its counterpart that was predicted uh, with AlphaFold 2 on the AlphaFold database available through Uniprot. So we see more or less the structures look very much the same and both have pretty high PLDDT. So I think it's safe to say that this structure is fairly accurate, at least with regards to these different models. Another thing I quickly want to touch up on is the fact that um, Whenever you're dealing with proteins, especially proteins that you're getting lower accuracy numbers from, it's a really good idea to try different models like Rosetta Fold 2, Alpha Fold 2, and ESM Fold, uh, just to kind of get a better idea of uh, different possible structures, as well as uh, the different confidences within different conformations and different structures. So for example, if you have uh, some arbitrary protein, and you predict the structure using uh, Rosetta Fold 2 and Alpha Fold 2, and both are completely different, then that can tell you that you know perhaps one of these models is completely wrong, or perhaps even both of those models are completely wrong. So you might need to do some kind of experiment to validate this. But generally speaking, if you have a protein and Rosetta Fold and Alpha Fold both predict really high uh, quality structures, and the structures themselves are actually quite similar, then this is usually a really great indicator that you might have a, an accurate structure. So I really hope this video is helpful. And uh, if you want to try doing this yourself, you can go over to the Neurosnap platform and sign up. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll, uh, I'll try and get back to you. And if I know the answer, I'll gladly answer it. All right, take care. See you in the next video.